Greetings, it is I, Tentus Naravan Jacobin, your lord and emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and we are talking about more tabletop today. I'm drinking a little bit of water. There's someone in nice in our Twitch chat. For those of you who are not joining live, but are on YouTube, come join us. You too can have me drink water. But yes, today we're making Mage the Ascension characters. Previously, I have talked about in my talkings of tabletop about the magic system of mage and drive deep into that. But now, well, that's only one big part of it. The other part is to make a character. Because honestly, if you do not have a character to dick around with the fabric of reality, then you're not going to be doing it anyway. So, yeah. That's about it. That's what we're going to be handling today, and I hope uh, everybody is ready for this. We're going to be doing it in the Mage 20th Anniversary Edition, and I'm going to be using the Mage 20th Anniversary Character Sheet. In fact, as I throw myself over into the corner, let's throw up here the... Oh, oh I did turn myself up over there. Let me... This is the Mage the Ascension Character Sheet, and this is, in fact, the four-page character sheet. There is one, two, and four-page character sheets. This one here is the one that you will find in the back of the Mage... At, uh, 20th anniversary book it is just the simplest part of it the other pages I'm going to show you off after we're kind of done here um, but this is our walk along thing that you're going to be using to kind of see the various abilities traits and other things that we're talking about in character sheet format put forward for you and this is going to be an easy way for you to tell what's going on um Hopefully it'll be enough. And you can see there's always... There's a lot of little dots on here. Certainly. And plenty about there are probably under, uh, meet, met with and played around with World of Darkness character sheets before. But those that you haven't, I will hopefully walk you through it. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my vampire or werewolf videos, here we go. We're going to chat about it. You're going to learn a couple of things. So what do we have on here? Well... We have a lot of traits that are on this character sheet. Pretty much anything that has a set of one to five dots, uh, well, set of dots after it, I should say, is a trait. And that normal scale is represented in your abilities as a character from one to five, normally. The more dots, the more dice you get is the easiest way to understand what it is. Uh, when it comes to most things, it's usually a combination of two different traits on your sheet that you roll together, and those two numbers added together in dots tells you how many d10s you roll. This is the quick and dirty of it. It makes it pretty easy. So if I end up with a, let's say, strength of three and a brawl of four, I'm rolling seven d10. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty uh, understandable. That's what we do. It traditionally is against a target number, which is, uh, I believe, 7 for Mage, but I'd have to look that up to be exact because it does change for various World of Darkness games. I'm not anything that... Um, but, again, it gives you an idea of how to roll these traits. We're not talking about the full how to play the game right now, which might have to be another a third video about this uh, for some rule, other rules side of things. Blow my nose. But regardless, having a trait of one in at least something means you can just do it. A trait of zero means it's outside of your purview. For various obvious reasons, the nice top of this chart where it's your attributes all have a minimum of one dot in them. Turns out, you need all nine of those in order to exist as a being in the universe. Anyway, so yeah, so zero would be no capability... And then five would be beyond normal human range. Um, all that kind of stuff. Anyway. So, you got your abilities, attributes, backgrounds. Um, are all the main ones you have there. But Erte, Willpower, Contestants, and Paradox all have zero to ten. Um, and Willpower is the only one that non-mages will also have. So, the Erte... Uh, quintessence of Paradox are all ratings that are specifically just mage. Then everything above that, both attributes and abilities and backgrounds, are technically everybody's got those. The backgrounds, though, do vary. There are some backgrounds that are 
every living being can have, and there are some that are definitely just a um, uh, what was the word I was looking for? Um, mage thing. And hello, welcome everybody that's coming in. So, you know, the big thing about this entire thing uh, is that you're going to have to understand is when you start with your character, think of it as you started out as a human, just a normal human before becoming a mage, Mage the Ascension. You start out with as a just average person, and eventually you become a beginner mage, and that's your awakened uh, existence. So, what do we have here? Let's talk about some of the things on your character sheet so that you understand them. Name, of course, is pretty easy. It's whatever your character's name is, player, whatever it is. As we look at the top here, um, we'll start with that kind of top of the sheet with all the things there. Chronicle. This is your gaming group, basically. It's who you are together as a group. You, you give yourself some names, like uh, the, um, the Dirty Dozen, when there's only three of you. Uh, or... <laughs> Or the, uh, the, the Bright Adventurers. So, I mean, those are terrible names, honestly. But you come up with something that represents your group as a chronicle. When it comes to understanding your character, nature is your true self, while demeanor is how you put yourself out to the rest of the world. So, like, it's a social kind of thing, nature and demeanor. Nature is, like, your true essence that what you try to hide from people while demeanor is the part of you that you put out to the world. We'll talk about them a little bit more. We'll talk about essences. This is your a uh, bit of your awakened avatar. There's four different essences that are like the prime forces of every mage you kind of kind of see towards. Affiliation tends to be your overall allegiance. Whether it's to the te traditions, which is what I'm going to talk about today, the technocracy, which is something I will mention more, or desperate. And um, you kind of put after that the exact group you'd have. So that's your sect. So affiliation is your larger group. Sect is your smaller group. There you go. And of course, concept is a basic shorthand description of yourself. So that would be kind of thing like... They give examples of, like, are you a cranky recluse or um, a, uh, a butt-kicking guitar punk, a gutter punk. These things are a set of words which represent who you are as a character and as a person when coming into playing this game. What represents you? Uh, then, of course, we have our attributes, separated to physical, social, and mental. They are what makes up you in those retrospectives uh, as a person. You have a set of physical, social, and mental statistics which represent you. Then we get to uh, abilities, which are talents, skills, and knowledges, which are your personal and professional capabilities that you've gained. Of course, then we have the spheres on here, which are the nine spheres. I talked about the nine spheres when I talked previously about the different uh, the magic system of mage, but you represent how much you have in each of these right here. Backgrounds, of course, are small benefits that affect you personally or can help the group as a whole. They are something that comes into representing stuff you gained over the course of your character's life, either as an awakened mage or even as a human that could help out. And then there is a listing for other typical abilities Basically, most of the time, these end up being um, effectively talent, skills, and knowledges that you want to take. There are other ones that aren't just listed on this page here, but they tend to be like rarer or less useful depending on most adventures that you're or most stories that you're in. That's kind of where it comes in. Erte is your force of will uh, for using magic. We talked about that when we talked about magic willpower is an important part it is effectively your force of will how much you resist uh things that it's both the combination of your mental strength and conviction 
and also ability to withstand things that would affect you mentally. So it's this combination of things. It's your will that you have. And of course, it mess your quintessence and paradox, a little bit of a wheel, which is um, opposite, of course, which is your ma magical energy versus the paradox you're uh, accumulating. Uh, your last two things are going to be your health, how much health you have, which you can see every mage has seven boxes of health. That's all you have. Seven health. As soon as you've taken that seven health, you're incapacitated or possibly dead. And a little area at the bottom of the sheet to list your experience points. How many you've gained. Because this is a system where you spend experience points to buy upgrades. Rather than experience points gain you a level, which is something similar to a Pathfinder or a D&D, this is more akin to something like a Shadowrun, uh, Bessem, and a lot of other systems like that where you gain experience and then you spend it to upgrade your character. There are other parts of the sheet which we'll talk about briefly here. Let's go to the other pages before we go back here. Merits and flaws. Effectively, these are your positive and negative uh, traits that were, or, or of things about your character that you add that gives you bonuses in various circumstances. M your magic areas with your wonders, roots, some focuses. A nice combat area for your weapons, your armor. Uh, expanded background stuff. So this is more information that you'd have for your backgrounds. Uh, for certain ones that would need more details. Possessions that you would have, including gear, equipment, familiar grimoire, a chantry, basically a mage base. And a little bit of a history section here. Uh, with some descriptions uh, and uh, awake and your your information as an awakened character. So, the fact is, you can get away with playing with Mage with just this sheet here, just this first page. In fact, this is the only page you will find in the Mage: The Ascension uh, 20th Anniversary book, and most Mage books have a similar page to this as the only thing they provide to you. All the other pages are extra pages. And yes, you can get up to, like I said, there's a two and a four page format too. But they add extra places where you can list more information. Otherwise, you're effectively just like writing on the back of your sheet. Which is fine. You can just write other information on the back of your character sheet. But there is a lot of stuff here that is good to know and good to have and talk about. So there are five main steps in creating a character for Mage the Ascension. You start with your concept and identity, which is you get your actual concept. Thanks. Speeding car. Your concept and identity is you choose your concept. We talked about a concept. You also get your affiliation, your essence, your archetypes, which is your nature and demeanor. Then you take care of your attributes. Then you take care of your abilities. Then you get your advantages which is your uh, focus, which we talked about during the, mage, uh, the, the ma magic section. That's your paragram, practice, and instruments, and your backgrounds. And you finally finish up with your spheres, beginning erte, willpower, quintessence, paradox, freebie points, and all the other little details here. So, let's talk a little bit about some of these different things, because, well, <laughs> we got to. Um, but what, the thing is, concept I talked about, they give samples, you can pretty much come up with anything you want. Essences. Let's talk about essences. There are four essences. Dynamic, static, primordial, questing. Dynamic is, you're all about progress and change. Static is your kind of an agent for stability. Primordial is your kind of on looking on a primal mystery. Questing is your kind of a dreamer looking of new horizons. That doesn't define it greatly. We're going to talk about it a little bit more. For archetypes, the archetypes list are the same for both nature and demeanor. You basically choose usually one to be your nature and sometimes either the same one to be your demeanor or a different one to be your demeanor, depending on how you display yourself to the world. Do I not hide who I truly am or do I try who I am? You know, I put on like a jokish face over the top of someone that's very serious or afraid or something like that. That kind of comes up to the different essences of it. We talked about factions. The three major factions, of course, are the traditions. These are the main ones that you um, 
usually talk about when you talk about the groups in Mage. They're the bitter enemies of the technocracy. Uh, they seek to return to the days of high magic, basically the Dark Ages and stuff, and bring about magical potential. Um, and it seems on the surface that they are losing the battle of reality. While on the other hand, technocracy, um, they're kind of... The idea under them is a global order under guidance and protection. Um, they want to r wipe out reality deviants. And they've been a 500-year war with the traditions. I blow my nose again. That was a bit of a big one. Uh, the disparates uh, protect their their ancestral ways, nurture their chosen people, don't like the war. Um, they've kind of like dismissed this entire battle. Um, they're kind of an underground group. Um, and they're now beginning to band together. They're basically everyone else is the dis disparates. Now, so we can talk about the different groups uh, of under all of these. Uh, I will basically kind of go over a little bit of each of these. Uh, fortunately, the book here it actually provides information for all of these. So the traditions have the nine traditions. So if you go the traditional route which is the normal route for mage. This is the basic one a lot of people go for is doing the nine traditions. Uh, you have the uh, Akashayana, or the Asketish Brotherhood. I'm kind of masters of mind, body, and spirits through the arts of personal disciplines. They have affinity spheres of mind or life. The Celestial Chorus are sacred singers who give human voice to the, uh, to the divine song. Their affinity spheres are prime forces or spirit. The Cult of Ecstasy, or the uh, Sahaja, are visionary seekers who transcend the limitations through sacred experience. They have Time, Life, or Mind as their affinity spheres. There's the Dream Speakers, or the Kahavadi. Uh, they preserve and protection of both the spirit ways and earthly cultures that have been looted, abandoned, or oppressed. They're very, like, traditionalists. Spirit forces, life, or matter are their affinity spheres. The uh, Euthanatoi, or uh, as they're sometimes known, the Carvanti. They're disciplines of morality, purge, uh, corrupting, and bring merciful release to suffering. They're all about, you know, the end, the natural end of things. So entropy, life, or spirits for them. The Order of Hermes are rigorous masters of high magic and elemental arts, with forces as their finny sphere. The Society of Ether slash Sons of Ether are graceful saviors of scientific uh, potential. Matter forces prime. Uh, the Verbania devote primaries of rough nature and mystical blood, life and forces, and virtual depths, reality hackers devoted to rebooting their world. So virtual depths are close to the technocratic union, but aren't there uh, with uh, correspondence slash data or forces. Virtual depths are basically a group that are on the fringe of both of them, but uh, air on the side of tradition, so they're very interesting. So, the Technocratic Union has its own groups too. They have Iteration X, who are the per protect, uh, perfectors of the human machine, with forces, matter, or time. The New World Order, who are custodians of social order and global stability, with mind or correspondence slash data. Progenitors, innovators dedicated to uh, potential of organic life, with life or prime. The Syndicate, Masters of Finance, Status, Power, and Wealth, with Entropy, Mind, or Primal Unity. Void Engineers, Explorers and Protectors of Extraventional Space, with Dimensional Science, Correspondence, or Forces. I am not going to get into the full list of the disparate crafts, but I will mention their names here. If you want to look into them, they are also in the uh, M20 book, if you want to go for the disparate crafts. Uh, they're the uh, Ali Batin. Uh, Bata, uh, I'm going to butcher these. I'm going to butcher a lot of these names, so forgive me for butchering them. Children of Knowledge, Hollowed Ones, Kopaloi, Nagoma, Orphans, Sisters of Hippotila, uh, Tafani, Templar Knights, and the Wu Lung. All these groups are part of the desperate crafts, so there are people that don't want to participate in this magic reality war that the traditions and the technocrats are going into and they're just like kind of can cut it out guys so
So there are primary abilities. What are the differences between primary abilities and secondary abilities? Well, the primary abilities are the ones listed on the character sheet. There are also secondary abilities which are not listed on the character sheet. I was unmuted. I was muted for a bunch of that stuff there. Well, grat. I don't know how long I was muted for. So I was coughing. Great. I'm going to assume I didn't say the background, so that's what I was muted for. So maybe I'll just cut out a little bit of that there on the YouTube so I don't remember I did that. <laughs> if I missed any of the secondary abilities, talents, not skills, and knowledges, that's what I was doing for a little bit. But um, backgrounds, let's go over them again. I, I missed that up. Uh, allies are friends who help you. Alternate identities, you could establish an alias that will help you. Arcane and cloaking, mysterious ability to remain unrecognized. Avatar slash genie, embodiment of your awakened or lightened self. Backup is agents you can call on emergencies. Blessings, a strange power of you know, the candy gift. Certification is permits you might have. Chantry and construct, basically your stronghold, whether you're a mystic or technocrat. Contacts, people that you can get information from. Cult, the grand people that basically believe in you, dedicated believers. Demence, your inner dream space. Destiny, a great certain purpose. Dreams, like hypercram, ability to tap into abilities you don't want to exist. Enhancements are cyber biotech components, basically very um, technocrat. Fame is your notoriety of sleeper world, which matches a little bit with influence with your social clout. You can have one and not the other. Familiar companion, a non-helper, non-human helper with special abilities. Legend, a potential potent archetype connected to you. Library, place with very special information you have access to. Mentor, awakened or enlightened elder of the bond to you. Node, place of power, but you with quintessence that you can access past life memories of a prior life patron an influential benefactor that has resources to help you rank a uh, title of importance among the masses uh re re requisitions access to technocratic hardware um some of these also cost double the amount of points normally and some of these are technocratic only noting that resources money retainers skilled followers Sanctum slash laboratory, special place to work on your arts, secret weapons, guinea pig static status with technocratic inventions, spies, information networks. St status is its position, favored position among your peers. So status, it would be amongst, if you're part of the technocracy, your status of technocracy, or if you're in the traditions, your status of traditions. Totem is a powerful spirit ally. You have to be a shamanic character. And Wonder is a talisman, fetish, or device that contains your own reality-bending power. Now, the nine spheres and the optional three spheres for technocrats. I have talked about them. There you go. We do not need to talk about them more. Check out my <laughs> Introduction to Magic video to know about the nine spheres. Correspondence, Entropy, Forces, Life, Matter, Mind, Prime, Spirit, and Time. Now, freebie points also will have a cost to it. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's one of the final things you're doing, and experience costs we'll also talk about. All right, let's break down this a little bit more. So, Nine Traditions is the big group. Technocratic Uses is another group. Desperates is a third group. These are all groups you can be part of. We talked about them just a little bit here, but the sheer fact is once you are playing a game, traditionally, what access you have is dependent on the game you're in. Your affiliation will determine that. It doesn't mean that different affiliations couldn't work together. But you traditionally want to choose characters that uh, you can work together on. There's an entire section in this entire book called Working Together, which you really want to read on. It's the fact is that you have to be able to cooperate. So, you know, why are you working together as a team? What's driving you together? <laughs> no, that didn't mute. Damn it, I'm so, so bad at muting and unmuting today. Sort of like, why would this one character that may be part of the traditions work with this character that might be part of the technocracy? You need good reason behind it, too. And both of you are going to have to have a fun time and not have, like, reasons to basically kill each other. So that's an important part of the entire thing. So your storyteller might just say, we're playing as the traditions. Or 
you know, traditions are what I prefer, but, you know, other ones, maybe. So, mages from the traditions and desperate sects are the ones that are most likely to cooperate. The technocracy, little tolerance for what they would call reality deviants. The thing is, judging by the story that's being told, there could be a reason for a member of the Technocratic Union to join with them. The Desperates could have a reason to join if it's something related to one of their, their groups, you know? So, finding why a group would work together is that you could create some very interesting storytellers. But, stories, based on that. But again, the traditions are the normal way that a lot of people kind of jump into this. A tradition mage is the I wouldn't call it standard, but it is the, like, tradition one, traditional one, that a lot of times, a lot of the older systems basically put you in. Things like the Desperates or the Technocratic uh, Union were added in later books uh, for both the original Mage and the Revised Mage. Now, in the core book of 20, uh, 20th Anniversary, it just allows you to choose between all of them. So, it gives you a little bit more of that uh, connection. So, I did mention the essence a little bit. Uh, effectively, it's a core identity to your avatar. Um, your avatar being your magical self. It's, it's, it's basically your magic personality is a way to think about it, too. Um, so, like, if you're dynamic, you'd, you'd be very intense, passionate, uh, where, whereas a pattern-oriented one would strive for stability and per uh, permanence. Uh, so getting an idea of how you do magic and kind of that matter of it. And Essence does deal a little bit with your avatar background, which I talked about. If you have strong avatar, a lot more points into that background, your Essence is going to be displayed a lot more in the way you do things. And you have to remember that. It's like, if you're dynamic Essence, well, and an avatar of five probably have trouble sitting down you have to get out there do things a lot you know so you can see how that builds your character a little bit <clears throat> now archetypes I, there's a list of them if you want to check them out go ahead and do it but the, ge the general idea is that they will give you the information that you need to know um, I talked about all the backgrounds Paragon practice and instruments, yes, we talked about them. Those are your focus. It's important to do for your character. And the finishing touches, which is mostly your spheres, RT, quintessence, and your freebie points. So, you all begin with one affinity sphere. Um, the sphere you understand best. This is your personal magic experience. So, one of the nine spheres is your affinity. Remember I said for, when I was talking about the uh, um, traditions... And, and also the uh, groups under the technocrats and even the ones that are under the desperates, desperates, all of them have a selection, if you're part of that group, of affinity spheres you choose one from. So you have to at least have one dot in your group's affinity sphere. That's the most important thing. Um, that's the first one you do. You get overall six dots to place in your spheres. And again, there are a few other provisions that we can kind of talk about this. Um, your sphere ranks can't be hard, higher than your Erte rating. Um, so if you Erte of two, you couldn't have a three in one of the spheres. Um, so really, you want to make sure you have your Erte sometimes before you choose your dots and spheres. Because, again, since that is the other limiting factor, is you have to have at least have one dot in your infinity sphere, and then you can't be higher than your Erte. So, you begin with an Erte rating of one. Wow. Uh, so you get one free Erte, and you have to spend freebie points to have more. And it is expensive. So you're probably not going to have a 
very high Erte, and even during character creation, if you could get enough points for it, there still is a maximum limit of an Erte of three. Um, so, yeah, more experienced mages might have a much more open thing for that if you're beginning as experienced mages, but it's assumed that if you are beginning mages or early mages, this is the way you build your character. That you have this maximum of three Erte, and uh, no matter how many freebie points you have, you still can't purchase higher than that. It does, again, limit your sphere maximum to three. You have six points, maximum of three in anything. But you can also have one in six different uh, spheres. You're just not going to be very powerful at any of them, but you're going to be able to a little bit about them. You begin with a willpower of five. That is your basic one. You can spend more freebie points to increase it. Um, quintessence and Paradox. Well, you begin with a zero in, in Paradox, fortunately. And your quintessence rating is equal to your avatar background shape. So if you have a four avatar, you'd have a four quintessence to begin with. Then you get those 15 freebie points to finish your character. Okay. Well, you know, there is some more sparks of life and things that you can do to increase your character. Uh, all the various things about character creation that you would do. Uh, coming up with backgrounds, your, your life stories behind it. There's a whole bunch of questions to answer in here. Uh, so yeah. So yes. Again, your four essences. Dynamic pattern, primordial questing. Choose one of those. Uh, <clears throat> nature demeanor, you can look up in the book for a lot of various nature demeanor that's exempted. Let's talk attributes. So you are going to start with a one and your maximum for any attribute is going to be a 5. Uh, that's very exceptional. And normally you're going to have uh, between 1 and 4. Basically, 5 is kind of inhuman. You have to consider it. 4 is the maximum pinnacle for human. 5 is kind of a little bit outside of mortal thing. And your attributes are pretty self-explanatory. Physical, your strength, your dexterity, your stamina. Strength, you know, lifting stuff, dexterity, flexibility, stamina, your body and ability to withstand things. Social, uh, your charisma, which is your general measure of your grace, favor, um, kind of how you stand out in a crowd, that kind of thing. It's your presence and appeal. Manipulation is your ability to manipulate other people, basically, on a natural thing. Um, charisma would be kind of your presence and, uh, you know... Manipulation is kind of your social cunning and innate uh, psychology. Appearances, how well you look. Uh, mental perception, how perceiving you are of things. Intelligence, uh, wits is your, kind of like your your kind of uh, mental reflex, uh, while intelligence is general. Int, that's kind of a hard way of describing it, but it, it is a way of describing it. Um, when you are choosing your attributes, so let's go through the steps here character creation finally let's hit those steps of character creation step one concept and identity we've chosen our concept we've chosen our affiliation we've chosen our essence we've chosen our archetype boom right then and there got those taken care of um, and we have to remember uh <laughs> your your faction is of course under your affiliation so we've got your faction your affiliation we've got all this stuff at the top of the sheet that's the first thing you do and it defines so much of your character um we've talked a lot about those your attributes you have a primary secondary and tertiary attribute categories what the hell does that mean well you have physical social and mental each divided into three attributes each of these you choose to have a number of dots you can spend in those physical social or mental seven five three okay you can spend seven dots in physical seven dots in social or seven dots in mental that is your primary whichever one you choose is your primary when you choose your secondary between the other let's say i let's for example say i chose mental my secondary is on either physical or social and i get five dots in it your tertiary, which is your last one, let's say, for example, I chose for my secondary physical, my tertiary would be social, I'd have three dots in it. So I start with one in all of those, I have a maximum of five, and I can spend as many as I have to increase those. That seven 
let's say for my example I gave, if I put it into mental, I could put it into perception, intelligence, wits. I could put four into perception and be a inhuman perceiver and have then three more dots to put into intelligence or wits. Because remember, it's one to five dots you start with, or and you start with one, meaning I can have one maximum, or I could put two with three to put four to maximum of human potential in two of those and have a two in the other one. However you want to break it apart, you can. You spend your points, you get your stats, you get your attributes, your traits right there. But it's this idea of you have a priority that you choose between. Do I priority my physical ability, my social ability, or my mental abilities? And what's my secondary priority? What's my third priority? And you choose the order of them and that determines the number of points you're spending in those. Very similarly, when we talk about abilities, your talents, skills, and knowledges also have a primary, secondary, and tertiary. At this stage, though, there is a limitation to abilities. You, can no long, you can't have higher than a three in an ability. That's a very important note here, too. So for abilities, though, for my primary, secondary, tertiary, I have 13, 9, and 5. Do I want to be very talented? Do I want to be very skilled or very knowledgeable? Well, if I went for mental, maybe I'm going to have my 13, my primary, and my knowledge. Maybe then I will have actually my 9, my secondary, and my skills. And my tertiary, my final priority, and my talents. I'd only have 5 points to spend on talents. I'd have 9 points to spend on skills, 13 to knowledges. The thing is, you can mix and match those 3 numbers between those 3 sections of your sheet here. And that's the way it is is the, it's each of these sections, both attributes and abilities, are subdivided into three groups. And those three groups, you choose numbers for each of those three groups between three numbers. Which one's your number one? Which one's your number two? And which one's your number three? And whichever you choose, you get a number of points to spend in there. Uh... If you want to look up more about the various core abilities and secondary abilities, the M20 book does list them all, gives you information about what it means to have um, a different number in them. Uh, there is also specialties, which we're not going to talk about quite yet. Um, but in general, you can have up to three in any of these things. Then each of those does end up being a lot of what you would use for a lot of the world. The secondary ones are there and are important to have, but there's a reason they're secondary, honestly. Um, there are extra skills which tend to be out there, not as useful. I mention them specifically because then you can kind of say like, oh, maybe I want to take that. And you'd look into and understand them, but they are not as I want to say normal not as often we use often used they are rarer used so it's not that you couldn't have levels of media it might be helpful for whatever you're building as a character then it's a secondary ab uh, ability you just have to remember that's what it's going to be because it is. Um, now, you have your advantages. This is where you define your focus, which we talked about focus being your paragram, practice, instruments. I talked about that before. But the big thing here is you choose your backgrounds. I mentioned all those backgrounds. You get seven points to spend between all of them. That's it. It's not a lot. It's only all that you get. That sh small, small number between that entire list. Granted, again, some of those are definitely technocratic only, and some of those are more expensive. Some of those cost double the cost. They specifically say in the book here, uh, cost a double amount of usual points. I can list the ones that do. Um, enhancements, uh, the cyber biotech improvements are double the cost. Sanctum or laboratory, double the cost. They're more expensive. 
Ah, uh, now you're saying that's not a lot of points for a lot of things. What can I do about this? <clears throat> well, I've got my spheres, my six points with my affinity sphere getting my first dot, my air time, my willpower, my quintessence, my paradox, my backgrounds, my abilities, my attributes. Now I have freebie points. <clears throat> well, freebie points, what are those? Let me just see if I can actually do this quite skillfully. Uh, did that do it? Yes, that did exactly what I wanted it to do. Dun dun! I opened up my the book here, uh, my PDF of it, to this page, and I'm showing you the freebie point and experience point cost charts. Here we go! Do 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 do. So, I start with 15 freebie points. What can I spend them on? Five of those freebie points can increase one of my attributes by one. Two of them can increase my abilities by one. One per dot of background. I can have 15 points in backgrounds. Seven dots per sphere. Four dots per Erte with a max of three. Meaning I can only spend eight of it on my Erte if I really wanted to spend for greater Erte. And that remember, they did say you might want to consider that while you're choosing your spheres initially. If I want to have higher Erte, I want to have up to that three, I might have spent some of these freebie points back when I was doing that. Uh, willpower, one per dot. Quintessence, uh, one per f uh, four dots. So one dot gives you four quintessence. Uh, merits, cost as per merit. And then flaws have a bonus as per flaw with a max total of seven. So what does that mean? Well, I can buy any number of merits I want as long as I spend the freebie points. Each merit I choose, which is a positive thing that gives you situational bonuses as a character, uh, has a cost to it, which is the number of freebie points. Flaws, on the other hand, are negatives that give you a penalty in various circumstances and situations to your character they act as bonus freebie points. And you can only have seven points of flaws. Meaning I can only get up to 22 freebie points if I buy no merits. They also have the experience point cost uh, ch chart here, which uh, if I want a new ability, new sphere, uh, increasing my uh, infinity sphere, increasing other spheres, your Erte, your attributes, your abilities, your backgrounds with storytellers um, permission. Uh, yes. Um, again, the background one is very optional. It's basically like something happens that you allow the background to be raised and then you're like, hey, you've done this. If you want to spend the experience, you can raise it. And then willpower, they've got the current rating times one. But the experience point costs are for advancement for later on the character. The freebie point cart, uh, chart here is the big important chart to talk about in this one. So, yeah. Huh. And once you've spent your freebie points, of course, then you get your appearance, impressions, quirks, cultures, beliefs, avatar, motivations, identity, all that other jazz, which is just character creation and putting together who your character is, kind of defining it. And there is information in the books, this book here in particular and other books like it, that help you with that part of putting your spark of life to your character like quirks and little things of like where culture you come from, the beliefs focus and paragram are kind of like your magic using person professions. Um, avatar slash genius is kind of your awakened self and existence of it, your mundane uh, uh, identity. These basic steps just, and that little bit at the end there define their existence as a character. Now I think that is the most I need to really talk about. Let me just check if there's anything here to discuss. I probably have to look up special ovations to mention that. Um, was it under? I'm going to take a drink while we <coughs> think about this. So again, there are backgrounds that can be pulled with characters together. <laughs> They do talk about that, so it's sort of like if you have resources, you can work together with another person in your group to back uh, to combine your money to buy things.
And here's an important part of this that they do talk about. There can be backgrounds over five. There are certain ones. They allies, backup, influence, library, node, resources, requisitions, and spies. They reflect external resources that other traits cannot match. These are the only background traits which can go above five, but really they are not ones that characters get normally, and ten is the upper limit. That's an important thing about it. So it's like this list of resources, it's money. You can be super goddamn rich. I could have a resources higher than five, but really, unless specifically worked out a reason why, I would have resources, node, requisitions, spies, allies, back, influence, or library above five with my storyteller, which might be an integral part of the story we're telling, I probably don't have that. <clears throat> These are not free, though. Like all things. Like the resources, you're going to assume to have that invested in a lot of places. Um, yeah. You might not be allowed to purchase these things here. That's the thing is, it, it, it really has to be discussed with your storyteller if you want to attempt to have this above five. So it's like, they can go above five. These specific ones here. Do they? Not normally. Because these are things that are very high end. If you're some of the richest people in the world, you might have resources of like 8, 9, or 10. But then you are one of the richest people in the goddamn world. That kind of stands out. So, that's why these numbers above 5 do exist. Just sort of? Uh, yeah. I guess that's the way of saying it. Sort of. They're not, like, a, a, a big thing above that. <clears throat> and that's another thing, is, like, when we talk about attributes, attributes above five are, like, five is very rare. It's, it's, it's outstanding for a normal human. And as a mage, you're very normal human. If I get above five, I'm very inhuman or something like that. Things like vampires, werewolves, and other things will have ratings in these in statistics above five. Yeah, mages are basically normal humans. They don't, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, there can be things that could raise your attributes, a magical source, but, again, then you're doing a magical source and have to worry about the reality kind of messing around with you. <clears throat> specialties we should talk about. Now remember, I said for your uh, abilities, you could not have above a three in character creation. But for your attributes, you can. Well, when you have a rating of four or higher in a trait, especially an attribute or an ability, you can get a specialty. What does it mean? And it's basically a area of expertise in that trait. Um, you count every 10 rolled as two successes, not one, when you have a specialty. Um, and again, normally your abilities aren't going to be above three in character creation. Unless I spend freebie points to get it higher, which I'm allowed to do, then I can have that four and a specialty. Maybe, if I choose to. Uh, and a lot of the Traits have suggested specialties. If you don't like any suggested ones there, work with your storyteller to choose something new. Um, but a good example would be like, let's just grab oh, athletics here. A specialty wouldn't it be like bodybuilding under athletics. So while especially under an attribute, something like um, your perception would be uh, sharp senses would be a, a, a specialty. 
the thing is, is effectively, when I'm rolling something that uses my perception, then, if I can say sharp senses would apply, or if I'm rolling something for athletics and I would say bodybuilding would apply, then I get the specialty. I could have two specialties if I had a specialty in a attribute and an ability, and I could see if either of them would apply to whatever I'm rolling. Because, again, most roles are an attribute plus an ability, so that's a kind of how you figure that out anyway. Um, so, uh, we've talked about backgrounds then. Uh, we can move past your backgrounds, uh, combining the gums. And, again, there are technocratic backgrounds that are specifically ones that you get bonuses for being part of the technocrat technocracy. But, you know, you are part of a very... You know, there's there's reasons to play and not play a technocratic union member. Again, normally, if I'm doing technocratic union stuff, it's probably part of a group of characters that are part of the technocratic union. Remember the work together thing? What works best with technocratic union? More technocratic union members, because you basically go to your players and being like, "Hey, we're playing the tech we're playing technocrats. Good luck." So. Um, you know, they talk about some of those backgrounds for them specifically. But let's, uh, but yes. Got resources 10. That would just be, you know, it's just insane. I, I, let me look up and tell you how uh, resources 10 is. Just because I, I want to mention how crazy that one is particular uh, because they do mention it. Um, yeah. So resources five is the one percent. You're a multimillionaire and you got central holdings, investment, savings. Resources ten is Bill Gates level. You own governments, basically. <clears throat> resources seven is the billionaires club. Uh, resources eight would be like you own your own company or very Bruce Wayne. Uh, resources nine is your own industries, like Tony Stark. They say. Um, so yeah. Basically, the richest people that we know about in the world are, are billionaires, maybe trillionaires, or resources 10. So, yes. Alright. But that is your, that's a little bit extra about backgrounds. Um, so there is some use of air table. Keep that in mind. Uh, focus and instruments are kind of connected to that. Willpower is very in, in, useful because you can spend willpower... Uh, both temporary and permanent willpower. Uh, if you look on this sheet, ba -bum -ba -bum, you will see that there is dots and squares below them. What the hell does that mean for willpower? The dots are your permanent willpower. The squares are your temporary willpower. You can spend temporary willpower and gain it back for various different reasons. You can also spend p permanent willpower. Uh, that's a lot harder to use, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're doing that, because that means you're in trouble. Okay, so the, I'm just going to note here, for this system, they specifically say the permanent is marked with the boxes, the temporary is marked with the circles. So, I thought it was opposite for vampire, but it might be this way for both of them, and I just messed that up always. You know? Um, what's this? Permanent willpower tracked, uh, track, tracking the boxes of the character sheet, and temporary willpower tracking the circles. We spend one power power make checks in the boxes when you make a willpower roll based on the permanent trait. Uh, and God, I, I feel like the the dots should be the permanent one and the boxes should be the where you check them off if you've you know used them or something. I don't know, whatever. As long as it's uh, situationally the same for all your characters, gonna be other. You know, uh, you can spend willpower to go your arte beyond its limits. You can do temporary beyond its limits for things. Um, there's, you start with a five willpower. Uh, average people have between two and four. Your average human, and um, then you have between one and ten overall. So, uh, you can get a success in an action by spending a temporary willpower. Um, you can uh, basically cancel a ba uh, a botch uh, or facing a paradox backlash. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things you can do willpower with. So it's a good thing to keep in mind, and you can both lose and regain willpower, so keep that in mind also. Um, yep. Yeah. 
Anyway, I think that is about all we have to talk about. Uh, I think the last thing we will ma mark and talk about here is a, just a little bit of uh, the stuff that's game-related here we'll talk about for a minute. That is stuff on your sheet we've kind of talked about that you should know about. Uh, health, for one thing. As there are three different types of damage you can take. Uh, there is bashing damage, oftentimes represented by a slash. What does this mean? Well, this is what fists, falls, and blunt trauma do. Uh, this is what most mages can soak damage out of. It turns out that you are good uh, at being able to absorb this damage and survive. There is lethal damage, marked with an X. These are slashes, cuts, and gunshot wounds, crushing, and other injuries. Most mages can't soak this without any kind of armor or magical enhancements that you would have. You can heal this with magic or technology, but it turns out that lethal damage is lethal for mages. It's bad. You don't want to get shot. Unlike vampires, which can deal with that crap. We've talked about that when I talk about vampires and their things. And then, of course, you've got aggravated, which is just, just bad. Werewolf claws, vampire fangs, raging fires, or metaphysical injuries uh, in inflicted by destruction of your essence pattern or other things basically are that. You would need special protection to soak this. Um, which is a good reason that they do specifically mention don't sass a werewolf. And even people that master life magic have difficulty healing aggravated damage. It sucks. And it's marked with a star. Uh, so, yes. And remember on this sheet, you have seven levels of health. You are squishy because you can only absorb, possibly soak, bashing normally. So unless you have some kind of way to avoid lethal, you certainly don't want aggravated and lethal is bad. You aren't a werewolf or a vampire, which have ways of avoiding a lot of that damage. You are a squishy, squishy human. You just have magic powers. You die very quickly. It's the, it's the age-old trope of the wizard having no health and dying very quickly that you need something beefy in front of. Unfortunately, kind of way, ways true here. Because you're really only soaking one of the three types of damage most of the time. And honestly you're not going to be great at it. You're not going to have huge amounts of ability to soak. So. <laughs> so experience points. What do they mean? Remember that chart we talked about? Well, basically, whenever you end a session, most of the time, the way they break it down is each individual character gets a certain number of points based on they get one automatically and then up to four depending on what was going on with their character during the adventure, during each session. I usually, as a storyteller, basically make it all the same for everybody. I have a kind of set number of uh, experience I grant my characters just to keep things even. If you want to be a little bit more focusing of your characters, basically the other things are learning curves, role-playing, focus, uh, staying with your focus, or heroism, earns players other things. Bonus points for those characters and making your various players have different experiences, fine. It just represents the people that dive more into their characters and do things better. Eh. I never liked that kind of idea of the system. It is a system that is understandable. But again, I usually just give a standard amount. Same could be said with end of uh, story. Uh, basically, once a story arc is completed, you give out uh, experience points. Exactly the same way. People can then spend stuff. Again, I try to keep it a standard between all players, but it's up to you. The normal way is honestly not to. Really, you only have to give out one per session, one per ending a story, because those are the automatic ones. After that, you don't have to give out any more. They really say that per session, max is five, and per story, the max is four. Because um, again, at, at the end of a session, you'd also end a story sometimes, too. I talked about spending in the experience. Um, so yeah. I think that's all we need to hit on this thing. And then we are done for the basics of your character. <sighs> cool. Honestly, I think that went through everything. And I think I hopefully explained it well. 
The problem with World of Darkness characters is there is a little bit of... If they're simple when you understand them, there is a little bit of, like, a learning curve to understanding them in the first place. That's an issue with a World of Darkness character. And it's the same with all of them. It is like, I've got to admit, there are things that are always going to be the same. Attributes, abilities, and uh, backgrounds tend to be the same for all of them. And yes, the difference between being a vampire, a werewolf, and a mage are going to mean you have different backgrounds. There are a bunch of backgrounds, like resources and contacts, the same for everybody. But there are other ones which are more specific to, I'm a mage, or I'm a vampire, or I'm a werewolf. Uh, again, the abilities attribute... The attributes are the same. Abilities, they kind of can be shuffled up for various characters. The secondary abilities are very a great way to add in a whole bunch of others that, you know, have options for things that expand your selections. There are expanded abilities for all of these uh, different things. And even other various World of Darkness type characters that are out there. This is the standard form for playing a World of Darkness character. If I am playing in the World of Darkness, this kind of concept for your character will be exactly this way. The priority system for both attributes and abilities, the, that's the way. Getting backgrounds there. Getting stuff that is unique to whatever thing I am, and then freebie points at the end. And the stuff that you start out with, your concept and your archetypes are always going to be the same. And then whatever faction or what it's called for you are tribe for werewolf clan uh bloodline all those different terms for what group am i part of you choose it at the beginning and there are some again like the essences that mages have that another group does not have but again this is a very big standard and i'm hoping you know now that i've covered this kind of three different times on my channel that next time I would talk about something else like Changeling or Mummy or stuff, maybe I can kind of hit into the specifics of that whatever you are a lot more than just the general character building. I can kind of be easy on the character building for all of them. I don't know. I'll see what I want to do when I talk about them in the future at some point in time. Because I do want to talk about more World of Darkness things. I want to talk some more about mages and other things about werewolves, vampires, and plenty of other World of Darkness systems because they're all really interesting and have different dynamics and they're technically all part of the same world. And this is the one thing I'm going to say at the end of all of this. And this is a very important thing to tell everyone out there. No two beginning characters from different systems are equal. I've talked about werewolves, I've talked about vampires, I've talked about mages. If I make a beginning werewolf, a beginning vampire, and a beginning mage, they are not equal. Not in the slightest. The werewolf will murder all the other ones. <laughs> That's the first thing you have to know. Followed by the vampire probably murdering the crap out of the mage. Depending on the situation, the mage could be built very much so to take out a vampire, especially something with forces that could summon just fire you know enough fire maybe take out the vampire but you'd have to probably specialize a lot air take of three forces of three get a lot of fire hope for the best those are really things that you might have to you might have to incur a lot of paradox but you could theoretically kill the vampire otherwise the vampire's gonna just kick your ass most times because the vampire can honestly soak lethal you know, you shoot the vampire, the vampire shoots you. You're not even using special powers. You die, vampire doesn't. Werewolf just murders everything. And there are other groups too. Changelings, hunters, uh, mummies, demons, wraiths. There's a whole host of things. Even stats for playing just normal humans. It's something I'm going to cover in the future. It's all the different things you can play in World of Darkness. But they aren't built equally. As much as mages are very cool and have this amazing abilities to alter reality... You have to always remember, I'm a squishy, squishy, squishy human. I can die very easily. Be smart about what you're doing. No matter what you do, squishy human, cool, amazing powers, squishy, squishy body. Unless I take abilities which protect my body particularly, then it's a squishy body. Maybe I did take stuff that protects my squishy body and makes it less squishy. That's good for you. You're now not squishy, but I specialized in not being squishy. Anyway, that's enough of that. I 
I hope everybody learned some things about playing a mage. Uh, if you if this is the first time hearing about a World of Darkness character, I hope I explained it enough. It's it takes a little to get into it again. I said, but hopefully you got it there. Uh, any questions, just ask me below. And then um, yeah, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day, having learned something. And we'll talk about more World of Darkness and more tabletop in the future. And till those times, I bid all of you out there a deep and satisfying food.